All right, when you start getting into textures, you're going to have some real good fun about how UVs work and everything else. So if I look here, I have my stupid material. And my material here can be changed to just about anything as far as the texture goes. But if you look real closely, it doesn't really quite make sense. And there's two of these objects. How did Unity get two objects? And this is the same object that I imported in. Now, just to kind of prove you that, there is box six. And if I look under cube one, I have a transform node in here. And each one of these I would have to delete out. Okay, here's a history lesson on history. In Maya, what will happen is I have my object, and anytime I edit it, combine it, remember I combined it, that was editing it, it made these inputs. Unity actually sees history. That's amazing. I could use that to my advantage sooner or later, but for right now, I would say history's bad. So edit, delete by type, history. File, export selection, and I'm going to call this box seven. Hmm. Here's box seven, and what I'm going to do here is take box six out of the equation and put box seven in. Always step back. If something does not make sense, make it make sense first before you go plunging on. If it's importing a bunch of junk, you don't want that. We've, we've done such a nice job of trying to figure out what scale is, what everything else is, why waste that? That's F on the keyboard, by the way. I keep jumping into a, something that's F. Now, all right, now, let's pick on something for example here. I'm gonna go in here and assign this banana bark to it, okay? And then I'm going to hit play and look around at the object and see what that looks like. And sure enough, it looks like banana bark. But here's the challenge, the Pepsi challenge, is let's look at this texture inside something like Photoshop first. Again, I just went through the open and I went through the multitude of assets and everything else, but I found banana bark. You can find it too, you just gotta poke around. I hit open, and there it is. Now if I look at that, corresponding to this, I'm gonna say something, something's afoot. Something's not making too much sense here. Why does it look so bad? If I look this at this in Photoshop, I'm gonna say, in Photoshop, how big is this? In Photoshop, it's 1024 by 1024. So I'm gonna go into the Unity engine and click on Banana Bark here, down below. It's under Trees, Ambient Occlusion, here's Banana Bark. And I'm gonna look at just the attributes here and I'm gonna stumble upon Max Texture Size 256. Well, why would you do that? The answer to that is if you have a lot of trees in the area, you definitely do not want to run them at full res texture unless you have a fast game or a fast uh, computer. Now, if I was to put this online, which is really easy to do, if I hit build and run, I can build this into a web player. Uh, test. This is what's so powerful of Unity. And if you get the full version, you have the ability to do it um, via iPod too, or yeah. Okay, so here's my little thing. I can run around here and it looks just fine. I can run around and here's my box and look how detailed it is. So I can put this online if I wanted to. It's only, it's all it is is Flash flash with JavaScript. Okay, so I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close out this now and understand that in here I could put my texture size as 1024 because that's my max texture size and I hit apply.
if I hit play, you're going to find a huge difference. Now, this has got a better resolution. And look at that. Amazing. Amazing. All right. So what happens if I can compile that over? Well, let's find out. Let's build, build and run. Understanding the limits of a thing will help you build things. What's the limit of my actual output? If it's going to be high res, well, I don't care about people on dial-up because people on dial-up should move. <laughs> no, it's not that bad, but look at this. So the detail on 1024 shows up just fine, and I can page around this. But this is running on my machine, so I have to understand that maybe if I put this on a web server somewhere, how fast is that going to be? All right, but that's we're, we're straying away now because we can quickly do that when we're trying to address things within an engine. That's what happens. Your brain goes into 50 different directions. You must stay focused on the stupid cube and the fact that we're learning texture scale. So now in the next video, what's really important? How do I get um, my scales to match up throughout my whole entire workflow? And that's next.